In 2010, tablets were set to change the world. In 2017, do they even matter anymore? You might actually wonder that, as a CNET headline recently did upon the announcement of new changes to Apple's vaunted iPad line. They almost made the announcement in a thief in the night sort of way. There was no big event, no gala, no incredible showy presentation, just a press release that rolled out a price cut and a little bit of streamlining of the models they offer. So what's going on here? iPads were supposed to be a 150 million unit per year business by now. Instead, Apple's only sold about 350 million in seven years. Tablets seem to have suffered from smartphones getting bigger and frankly big enough. The big phones or phablets have grown 350 percent in the U.S. market. What do you hand your kid when they're antsy and bored? A tablet bigger than their head or just your largest phone? Also, all smartphones have a built-in 4G connection to the internet where that still remains relatively rare on tablets. And most of us don't relish the idea of adding another device to our wireless plan. Cheap tablets have taken over the market. We don't seem to care so much about having a certain brand of tablet or at least having the latest model. Whereas we are pretty aware and up to date on having more or less the latest smartphone. But don't write off tablets. There are still a billion unique users around the globe that have and use one which is somewhat less than half the number of those of us who use a smartphone. And the Microsoft effect is being projected. The Surface line is expected to go from under 9% of the global market in 2015 to almost 20% 20 in 2020, almost single-handedly stabilizing the tablet market worldwide. And give tablets credit for stoking our appetites that led to things like big phones or phablets, convertibles, laptop-tablet hybrids, all things we might not have even known enough to ask for before 2010. Know what's next at cnet.com slash nextbigthing. I'm Brian Cooley.